Okay, in this video I'm going to demonstrate how I overcame the thermal runaway error that I got after I upgraded my Prusa MK2 to the Prusa MK2 2.5S upgrade package. Now I'm just going to show you the firmware that I was uh, using when I did this. This is 3.7.2.2363. What would happen after it finished the first layer, the cooling fan would come on and then the temperature would quickly drop on the hot end from 215 to about 190. Um, I'm going to go ahead and start a print here. Um, this is the um, object that I'm going to print and you'll see that um, when I start to print, it prints the first layer perfectly and I have no problems at all. It's when it goes to the second layer and the cooling fan kicks on is when the temperature starts to drop rapidly in the uh, hot end and that's when you get the air. I'm just going to fast forward um, through the first layer here and you'll see the temperatures rising up. It's going to get to uh, 215 and then you'll see the um, bill plate begin to move and do its calibration and then um, it will do the first layer here. Now, like I said, it does the first layer perfectly, and which just leaves you thinking that you know your print's going to be fine. But after it prints that first layer, um, the cooling fan, which is in front, and it's an angled cooling fan, which is a different um, configuration than the MK2, and I think just the extra cooling that it gets, it just cools the hot end. So I'm just fast forwarding through the first layer here and I'm going to slow it down again after it gets to the end of the first layer and um, when it starts the second layer is when the cooling fan um, kicks in and it temperature begins to drop. So watch the hot end temperature here. Just finished, just about finished the first layer and as it finishes this first layer the cooling fan will rock on here in about two seconds. Okay, so now the cooling fan just went on. Now I walked to the hot end temperature. Quickly drops. Now the, the temperature was set from 215 to 210, but then the hot end can't keep up because the fan is blowing directly on the hot end. So it's affecting the thermistor and the um, the heating element can't keep up the temperature with all that fan blowing on it, so it just continues to drop. Because the temperature in the hot end continues to drop, there's a fail-safe measure in the software that the print will, will stop because obviously the um, temperature of the PLA won't be hot enough to uh, go through the extruder even though maybe it is hot enough and it's the thermistor is reading 185 instead of 210. But either way, it's going to give an error and it's going to stop printing. So there is a way to fix this and I did a little research. And now there you go, there's the thermal runaway. And the, the print stops and it starts to cool down and you have to restart your printer uh, to continue. So um, I came across uh, and doing a little research finding out that you can use these thermal um, silicone socks that are made by uh, E3D. And here you'll see that I've um, got a picture here at the, at the cooling fan and the uh, heating element. You can see my, uh, my heating block is a little bit dirty there. But when the, when the new cooling fan, that, that air comes out of the cooling fan, it really blows really hard on the thermistor in front and the cooling head. Okay, so I'm going to show you the E3D silicone sock um, that is made for this uh, Prusa print head. And as you can see, it has a large hole there for the nozzle. It has a small hole in the back for the set screw. And it has cutouts on the side for the wires going to the um, heating element and the thermistor wires. So you'll see as it... Uh, as I install it here, it just kind of squeezes and it should fit like a glove right around the entire heating element. But you're going to have to take care and use some sort of tool to uh, make some space with that little piece of rubber to get it underneath the wires of the thermistor. I had my thermistor wires a little bit too snug 
in there when I when I uh, assembled it. But if I take a little bit of care and uh, make sure you don't mess with those thermistor wires, you can just kind of snugly fit it in there. And once you get it in there, it actually does fit like a glove over the uh, over the heating element. It leaves a nice space for the nozzle. The nozzle fits perfectly in there. And you'll see I just kind of squeeze it in there with this small driver, making sure it's squeezed up nice and tight. You don't want it hanging down low because you want to make sure it doesn't catch your print anywhere as it's going over your print. So you can see I got it on there nice and snugly and just kind of wiggle it back and forth with your fingers and make sure it is on there nice and tight. So the next thing we're going to do is we are going to um, do a print with the sock on it and we'll see how that does versus um, the first print I had that didn't have the sock. Now when this uh, prints, you see that air that, you know, air coming out of the uh, cooling fan will hit the sock instead of the head. Okay, here I have my printer set up and I'm going to do that print again, the exact same print, which is that uh, kind of that square looking uh, test print. And um, I'm gonna do everything exactly the same uh, except now I have the silicone sock on it. So I'm just fast forwarding through um, the heat up and the um, calibration sequence. And then I'm gonna speed up through that first layer just so you can see once I finish that first layer and the fan comes on again that I'm not gonna get a temperature drop. Again, the, the print starts at 215 and after the first layer it goes down to 210 so the the program temperature is 210 and you will see the uh the hot end temperature drop to 210 very quickly but it will hold its temperature this time at 210 or slightly below 210 and doesn't drop like a rock like it did uh, without the silicone sock and i haven't changed anything else in the print settings um, i initially tried to fix it by doing um, changing my fan settings, but um, that was just didn't work. So as you can see here, I'm just finished my first layer. I'm pointing to the fan that it's just come on and uh, the temperature for the hot end was programmed to 210 now. And you can see the hot end temperature does drop a couple points, but it will, it will come back up here very quickly and will recover instead of going into thermal runaway. And just by putting that silicone sock on from E3D is what makes all the difference in the world. It's nice to have a nice strong fan cooling your part as it's laying down the PLA, but um, you don't want to cause any problems with your hot end not keeping your filament um, nice and hot. And you can see here, I just fast forwarded through to the end of the second and third layers just to show you that it continues to uh, keep its uh, temperature nice and hot. So anyways, that's how I fixed my thermal runaway error on my Prusa MK 2.5 upgrade from the Prusa MK 2. Um, it was really the only problem that I really had uh, when setting up this printer. I had a little bit of problem with my calibration, but um, other than that, it was uh, pretty good. And as you can see, um, this is actually one of my very first complete prints um, that I did on this printer, and it came out fantastic. I mean, just everything about it looked perfect. Um, so Thanks for watching my video on the Thermal Runaway fix on my Prusa MK 2.5S upgrade. Sorry the video was so long. I tried to fast forward and condense it as much as possible, but it still ended up being nine minutes.